Hi, it's Chris Wallace. I'm uh, thrilled to be here at uh, ASCO 2023 with Jeremy Calais. And uh, at this year's meeting, he's presenting some uh, new data on the role of uh, PSMA-guided uh, salvage radiation therapy for patients uh, with biochemical recurrence after um, radical prostatectomy. So Dr. Clay, thank you so much for joining us. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, about your study? We know obviously PSMA PET is uh, probably the newest and hottest thing for I guess the last five years or so um, in prostate cancer diagnostics. So how does this uh, study that you presented at this year's meeting fit into the existing literature of what we understand about PSMA scans? Yes, sure. First of all, thank you for inviting me. My pleasure to be here and share our experience with PSMA PET. This is a real-world data retrospective study that uh, we did with my uh, radiation oncologist colleagues, uh, Dr. Clayton Smith and Dr. Amar Kishan. So our referring oncologists, radiation oncologists, urologists, medical oncologists, you know, they are really they were key partners during the five, six past years where we used PSMA PET. And this is what this study is about. At UCLA, we started to use quite early in comparison to other sites in the US, PSMA PET, something like 2016. And very early, uh, the oncologists started to act on the findings very rapidly uh, because you see the disease, so you cannot ignore what you're seeing on the scans. Um, but of course, there is no real guidance that we don't really know the best way to act on these findings. Um, especially for radiation oncologists because uh, radiation oncologists they can target with uh, focal radiation therapy the lesions they see you can modify the fields you can add concomitant ADT or not you can change the dose so they can do many things based on the findings and we try to look back retrospectively how they acted on that and the impact on the outcomes based on the PSMA PET scan findings so we were able to identify 200 patients that had biochemical recurrence after radical prostatectomy uh, were treated with some salvage radiation therapy with or without uh, oligometastatic directed radiation therapy with or without ADT. And in these 200 patients, um, the PSA, the median PSA was 0.6 and we look at uh, the outcomes. So a little bit like Every time, the information you get on the PSMA PET scan, the more you see the disease, uh, the worse outcome it is. And if you see metastatic disease, it's, uh, it provides worse outcome than if you don't see it. So for the M1 patient, um, the overall um, median follow-up of the study was three to four years. The M0 patient had uh, no progression after a median progression of four to five years, whereas the a metastatic patient had um, two to three years. So there is a big difference between the M1 and the M0 patients. That's all comers. Um, similarly, the more you have lesions, the worse it is, of course. So mm -hmm. it just goes always in the same direction. The more disease you have to treat, the worse it is. It reflects more advanced disease. It's just that now with PSMA PET, we can confirm that the information we get from this new scan also translate into that. Absolutely. And then there is another thing that I think it's important to, to point out that because this technique, which is new, so people you know, with new things, they have to think new management. Some wanted to maybe de-escalate therapy. This technique is more sensitive, more accurate than all the other imaging techniques. So some people wanted to uh, just treat what you see because what you don't see, uh, there was nothing. And in fact, when you compare the groups, for example, you can take the example of a group of patients that have some metastatic disease somewhere. Um, again, it was very early, so usually they have a median number of lesions of one to three, so it's really oligometastatic patients. They got treatments on these lesions, mm -hmm. whether it's pelvic lymph nodes or bone. And some radiation oncologists kept the radiation of the pelvic fossa, the prostate fossa, mm -hmm. and some did not. Right. And when you compare the outcomes, clearly it seems that um, the patient who did not get their uh, prostate bed irradiated had a much higher recurrence rate. Mm. So, and even and in this patient, they had uh, no visible PSMA PET lesion in the in prostate. The fossa. So mm. there was no indication of, I mean, by PSMA PET, a lesion in the prostate fossa. But if you don't irradiate it, there was a much higher recurrence rate than if you irradiated, even if there was nothing visible.
Right. So finding like that, at the end, what I want to say is that th there was no, you know, guidance on how to act on each findings. All these things are new, so there is no cooking recipe, no guiding book yet. It just may pet, you know, show you much more information. It doesn't really create uh, simpler things. It almost complexifies a little yeah. bit the management because you have multiple parameters and more uh, to do. So um, we really look forward now that you know PSMA Pet is in the landscape to have all the prospective trials, getting mature data. You know th there are many ongoing trials, uh, phase three, randomized, acting on the pet findings and randomizing patient pet positive. You do this management plus that and you compare to uh, another management, pet negative, you do this or that, and then we'll have more um, robust information on how to uh, use uh, PSMA pet information at best. But still a lot of work uh, to do. Absolutely, and I think you've highlighted there nicely how you know, our data so far is really focused on how PSMA pet changes our management, and, and we're waiting for that jump to know how it impacts patient outcomes. Yeah. And this is, I think, you've alluded to some of the nuances there in, in this data that can give us a clue maybe uh, how that's headed, but I think it's a, you know, obviously an, an answered question. I guess the other question I had is, this study focused on those patients who got salvage radiation therapy. How often in this setting do you find that patients um, have such a burden of disease on PSMA PET that you would no longer want to offer salvage radiation that, you know, that the, the dis multidisciplinary care changes in such a way that we're talking only systemic therapy. I guess the real question is what proportion of patients are excluded from this present analysis? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, we excluded a lot of patients. The inclusion criteria was the patient who actually got salvage radiation therapy following a PSMA PET scan. And so in that, you don't have all the patients uh, that you know clearly they had too much disease and switched to systemic therapy only. Mm -hmm. uh, in our experience, so based on the patient population you, you're looking at, for example, if you take patient with PSA below one, uh, you know, first recurrence uh, after prostatectomy, so kind of very, very early, mm -hmm. true, true salvageable patients, I think it's about 10 to 15 percent of the patient where you would see some disease outside of the, the pelvis. Mm -hmm. And in, a, in our prospective study that we are still uh, following up now, right now uh, in this exact setting, it was about 5 to 10 percent that were switched to complete systemic therapy management. Right. So it's not 50 percent, of no. course, you know, it's a PSA of 0 0.2, yeah. 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Absolutely. But still, still, 5 to 10 percent, they will switch to complete this because mm -hmm. you see on the scan that salvage radiation therapy would make no sense. Mm -hmm. It's obvious based on the scan. Absolutely. Yeah. I guess the other question that comes in there is you said your PSA threshold or the median PSA in this cohort is 0 0.6. And so our questions always come down to, you know, are we waiting too long to get the scans and we should be initiating our salvage radiation earlier, right? You know, some of the guidelines are saying a 0 0.2 threshold. Um, and so, you know, your thoughts on whether if we used an earlier threshold, clearly PSMA scans are, are are very the positivity rate is very dependent on the PSA level, yeah, right. and so if we jump back to uh, an early salvage threshold of like 0.2, how does that change? Or did you do any subset analyses looking at those um, those patients with a lower PSA? I think you know the general rules they don't change. The lower the PSA, the higher success uh, rate chances you get. You know what what we have to understand is with PSMA pets that is currently the best imaging technique to image prostate cancer, you just underestimate less the burden of the disease than with the other uh, imaging techniques, CT, bone scan, fluciclovine, choline. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but there's still a lot of disease that you do underestimate and you don't see. So based on that, and this com question comes back all the time, uh, for sure the higher the PSA is, the higher the volume of the disease is, and the more likely you will see something on the scan, and inversely, uh, the lower the PSA is and the less likely uh, you can see something on the scan. Now, we have all kinds of stories sometimes, you know, even at the PSA of uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, I have sometimes a bone metastasis, but that's very rare, mm -hmm. but that, is, that exists. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you act on that? And I think now that PSMA PET is widely available, there is not really, uh, I don't see a lot of negative to, to do the scan. You can just try, see what you get and um, there is nothing to lose to try and see. So what do you do with the negative scan then? I think 
If the scan is negative, you should treat the patient as if there was no PSMA PET information before. So if your intention was to treat just based on a PSA level of 0 0.15, 0 0.2, and initiate cell bed radiation therapy, you do the PSMA PET scan. If it's completely negative, you keep the same management. There is nothing new that would have changed the management. So that, so far, that, that's the way, I would, the, the way I would see it. And so you use it only to escalate therapy mm. if you see something. Right but you should not de-escalate. Yeah, I think that's very reasonable. Well, thank you so much for your time and for joining us and sort of lending that extra insight into the great data you're presenting at today's meeting. Really a pleasure. To thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.